for me to wash those dishes on a regular basis. So I go in there I one busy evening, I start washing the dishes, doing my best, and the owner of the the owner's son of the company comes up to me and he says, George, you're gonna have to move a lot faster. He, he didn't say it this graciously, but I am sure it's okay. And then he says, wait a minute, and he, he pushed me aside and he says, he says, let me do a few of them. And he started cranking these dishes out. And he said, George, you know, sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but if you just push yourself, you get into a rhythm. And I, you know, 16 year old boy grabbed hold of that. And I started cranking out those dishes. And uh, I started getting raises. I started getting more hours and everything. Just that little bit of advice, I applied it. I, you know, I thought I, I was at my limit. But he showed me that there was something more in me. If I just pushed a little harder, worked a little harder, there would be this rhythm. And sure enough, man, I would crank out those dishes. I got I got dishwasher awards and everything. The waitresses would give me some of their tips, you know. But I, I carried that on uh, all my you know to all my other jobs and all my endeavors. That little bit of advice never helped me. That helped me more than anything that any, anyone could ever say. Just push yourself. Once you do, you'll get into this rhythm. Wow, that was awesome. That was Molly's Cafe, which is there no more. Okay. Now, let me ask this question. What can cause us to lose the desire to work hard? Because, you know, we do. I mean, whether it is our, our paid job or whether it's ministry, whether we're, we're working for the Lord, whether it's volunteering, uh, there are some days where we just crank it out. Amen? There are some days, well, how you doing? Well, I'm here. Right? Uh, let, let me share one thing that I believe makes the big difference. What can cause us to lose the desire to work hard. Answer, are you ready? Discouragement. Discouragement. I don't know about you, but when I get discouraged, I don't feel like working hard. I feel like just throwing in the towel and being an ex-dishwasher. That was literal, okay? Please give me a mercy laugh at least. Thank you, okay. Turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter six, starting with verse nine. One of uh, really the, the cornerstone verses of my life. The Apostle Paul is talking about walking in the Spirit. And these couple of verses he says this. Galatians. Remember we're going to be back in Proverbs, but just go to Galatians. Go to the New Testament right now. He says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest. Right? Is that the end of the verse? If, say that big word with me, if we do not lose heart, if we don't give up, if we don't give up, right? And then he says, um, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of God. Okay? So this is the version, I memorized it in the King James let us not become weary in doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, but especially to, especially those that be of the household of faith or the family of God. So what keeps us from being discouraged? Knowing that there is a harvest that we're working for, right? There is, a, again, whether in our, our paid jobs or volunteering or in ministry, there is a harvest. And in ministry, the harvest is people that come to Jesus. That's the harvest. That keeps us going. Youth that are ministered to, children that get a grasp of the gospel, marriages that are restored and healed. This is the harvest. I don't know about you, but that keeps me going. I'm hopeful of the harvest, right? Okay. Uh, and that, these are meant to encourage you, okay? Col Colossians 3.23. Let's turn to Colossians. That's just up a few pages. All these New Testament uh, scriptures are clustered together. Most of them are written by Paul. Colossians, are you there? Yeah. Chapter 3. Let's start with verse 23. 
He says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. My goodness. That is a tall order right there. Whatever I do, I'm supposed to work at it with all my heart. Everything from washing dishes to driving a truck to you know, designing databases to, to working in a children's church, the youth group, the worship team, the ushers, the greeters. Work at it with all your heart. My goodness. You know, Jesus gave us his all, right? He expects us to give him our all. Amen? Amen? Work at it with all your heart. My goodness. I mean, do we do that? I don't always do that, my, my brother, my sister. I, you know, I, I'm famous for just doing the minimum. What's the minimum? Okay, I'll do that. What, what do I have to do just to get by? I remember one time in school, my teacher called me forward and she said, George, you're making it through the class, but you're making it by the skin of your teeth. I said, yes. you know, my teeth, that is pretty bad. But I was making it. That, that's not working at it with working at it with all your heart. He says, as working for the Lord, not for men. This is what will help you deal with a cantankerous, mean boss. Knowing that he is ultimately not your boss. Jesus is your boss. Jesus is your boss as working for the Lord. He says, since you know that you will receive an inheritance, here's you know, the promise again, the benefit, from the Lord as a reward. Say reward. reward. It is the Lord It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does, does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. So, you know, that makes me want to pray for my contemporary boss. Pray for the, the boss that's, that's mean to me. Amen? Pray for the pastor that's not appreciative, God. I appreciate all But you know, sometimes we don't always get the accolades. We don't always, don't always get the recognition and the thank yous. Amen? Because uh, people are human. And they're not, they're not going to always give you what you deserve and should have. But it's going to be up to you to work with all your heart as unto the Lord and not unto men. Do it for Jesus. Tell the person next to you, do it for Jesus. One more scripture of encouragement. In Hebrews chapter 6. Keep going. Work it back. Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, look at verse 10. It says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence, we'll talk about that word, to the very end, in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Not lazy, but through faith and patience, you inherit what has been promised. You inherit, you, you experience the blessing, the, the harvest, uh, as, you, as you're diligent and as you persevere. Do those verses encourage you? Okay, good. They encourage me. Let's read uh, again from Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs. Hopefully you, hopefully you held your finger there. And there are promises. Not only does he say work hard, not only does he say be diligent, but uh, there are also promises for our diligence and promises for our hard work. First, let's look at that word diligence. Diligent or diligence. It's quietly and steadily persevering in one's work or goal. Quietly and steadily persevering. Somebody told me once, if you want to make it here, you, you've got to use two parts of your anatomy, two parts of your body. Your mouth and your butt. You tell me you gotta work your butt off and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Quietly and steadily, I, that woke up a few, right? Persevering in one's work or goals. Perseverance and consistency, 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 consistency in carrying out tasks. Now the Hebrew word there in your notes is karut. 